excavation. It's one of the first and most important steps in the construction of any hardscape project. Over dig and you're wasting precious labor hours, equipment hours, consuming more base material than expected, and taking more trips to the dump. Under dig and you have to correct those mistakes by hand, which is inefficient. And you might be building a system that's inadequate for the requirements of the project. That's why it's so important to determine the soil type before beginning construction, either clay, sand, or silt. To do that before bidding, we use a simple coring tool like this to extract a sample of the soil at the desired depth of our soil subgrade. From there, we can conduct one of three simple tests. The first one is called the snake test. Take that sample, make a little ball, roll it out on a hard surface. If you can roll that out wider than the width of your palm, that's indicative of a high percentage of cohesive particles, which means it's clay. The narrower the snake or an inability to make a ball or a snake means that you have a sandy or gravelly or silty soil. Important to identify before we start building. The next thing we wanna check is the drainage ability of the soil. We can do that with a test called the shake test. Take a small sample, make a ball about the size of a ping pong ball and add a teaspoon of water. You can do that using a simple bottle cap. Add that water and shake it vigorously in your hands. If the water escapes the sample and remains on the palms of your hands or on the surface of the ball, that's indicative of water traveling easily through the soil. If it doesn't, then it's a poor draining soil. The last thing we want to check is the dry strength of the soil. To do that, we want to conduct the paddy test, and it's as easy as it sounds. Take the soil sample, make sure it has enough moisture that you can form a hamburger patty with it, leave it out in the sun to dry. Once it's dried, try to break it. If you detect some resistance while breaking it, that's indicative of those cohesive particles holding it together, which confirms once again that it is a clay soil. If you're working with clay, you cannot compact without amending first. There are two types of amendments that we can conduct. The first one is called a gradation amendment. To do that, take three quarter inch clean clear stone or number 57s, spread that over the surface, an inch or two thick, run the compactor and drive that into the soil. That changes the load bearing ability of the soil, making it more appropriate for the construction of our base. The second type is a chemical amendment. We can do that using lime. Spreading a 50 pound bag over 100 square feet will give you the coverage that you need to chemically alter the soil, allowing for excess water to evacuate the system and evaporate away. That means it's then ready for compaction. That's a particularly useful way when building early or late in the season when the weather tends to be wetter. If the soil feels particularly wet or particularly weak, you might want to opt for the two amendments together be sure to spread the lime first, then the stone on top, run the plate compactor over top to drive both amendments into that soil subgrade. In this case, we're working with a sandy gravel mix, so we won't have to amend, we can proceed with the compaction. But before talking about that, I do wanna draw your attention to the excavated area and the excavated depth. We're in a very established neighborhood. The subgrade hasn't been disturbed for decades. We have tight access. This is a perfect project for synthetic base. And on this project, we're using gator base because at three quarters of an inch thick, it represents the equivalent of six inches of base material. It has a great insulating factor, which is very practical in this free saw susceptible climate. It has the proprietary tongue and groove system that ties the panels together, increasing its load bearing ability and making it easy to traffic this area during construction. And finally, we have these drainage channels that lead to drainage holes. That allows water to flow right through this material, through the two inches of sand or stone below it, and then follow the subgrade to the desired area. That's important because on this project, underneath our hardscapes, we're installing a rainwater harvesting system. So 100% of the rainwater falling from the sky, landing on our turf, or on our pavement will run down through the synthetic base, through the two inches of stone, follow the subgrade and go to this drainage channel. What we see here is a schedule 40 pipe perforated with holes facing down, resting on four inches of clean stone. That way, the water, which will be carrying subsediments, can go to the bottom, sediments can settle to the bottom, clean water can rise up to the top, hit the pipe, follow the pitch the whole way around the yard, to our reservoir, which can hold enough water to irrigate our raised garden beds here and in the back corner. 
All the excavation is complete. Our pitch is accurate. We were able to do that by effectively communicating all the existing grades and the desired grades of the subgrade to our excavation subcontractor using a grading plan. That went well. The next step is to compact our soil. Then we can roll out our gator fabric, install two inches of quarter inch clean stone, ASTM number eights, then our gator base.